Do you hear how noisy that is? That's terrible. So one of the big things that I've been doing, which if you've been following, it's my last two fucking videos were background noise removal. And it's a pretty, uh, pretty deep rabbit hole, it turns out. So usually what I would be doing is our extendy hum. Because if you hear, there's this low end rumble. And that does a really good job of getting rid of it. The only problem is take a look at the DSP up here when I do that. It, sh it doubles in an instant. And one of the big problems I was running into is I would be launching a game or something like that. And all of my DSP would just spike all the way to 100. In fact, we can demonstrate that. So right now, I'm launching the... Uh, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the newest one, right? And I want you to pay attention up here to this DSP, to what happens whenever I do that, as soon as the game starts to launch. So, with our extend hum, you can see it starts to absolutely get slammed, and you can hopefully hear all the crackling that happens from that. It is getting destroyed right now, and I can't stand it. So that, to me, is a huge problem, and that's a big reason why I fucking hate RX-10 Home. So we're going to get rid of that and show you the new thing I've been doing. So if you remember a while back, I had made this video like uh, live active noise cancellation made easy or something. And what it did was take all of the output from my mic track, flip the phase on it, and that was good, right? And that was the early, early stages. And I, I never looked into it again until right now. And I realized, holy shit, should have looked into it again because it's insane. So what I have here is two audio tracks that are in a group with my other audio track, which is for my mic stuff. And there's... This is like, and we're gonna delete the hum. This is just all of my mic processing. It starts off with a brick wall high cut that gets rid of this weird thing from my preamp. Then since I have a dynamic mic, it's an SEV7. Uh, it's very dull if I turn it off. Uh, this EQ, which all this does is just clean up the high end. It sounds like this. It's very dull. I'm not a big fan of that dull sound. So I do this to clean that up. And then I just go into my de -esser. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, this is called pre-box. It's a it's an emulation of like different uh, preamps and so that's all that is just to get some coloration and then some slight compression and that's it that's my whole mic chain one of the shitty things though that you can hear is whenever right now the noise manageable i can live with it but as soon as i turn this on all that preamp noise gets accentuated if you remember the active noise cancellation uh all i did a really shitty way of writing this and this time i've done it differently uh i have this audio track which is in the group with my main mic stuff and all it's doing is pulling from this track and then it's outputting to that group same goes for this one this one's for the low end and inside this what i'm doing is i have a band pass that only targets the high frequencies that are being accentuated by that original eq and these are going to be the the things that do the preamp noise and shit like that that nobody likes and after that i go into pro c2 which has a really low threshold all the way on the ratio lowest on the attack release no auto gain that is essential no oversampling that's all so essential the knee has to be at zero and the range has to be all the way up hold has to be at zero here's what it sounds like you can hear all that preamp noise goes away you can also probably hear an argument in my living room uh let me show you why oversampling needs to be off you see you hear that it creates latency just enough to throw it out of phase that's not good so this is my settings for that now it didn't do enough Oh, uh, another important thing, I also have it set to opto. Keep that as well, because that really chunks it. Uh, but it didn't do it enough. So after that, I also have a stock Ableton compressor, which has the attack actually kind of set up a little late. So it's, you know, 0.1 milliseconds or point, you know, whatever. And uh, had to be like that because it, it was a really weird crackling that was going on. And then I have the threshold just above the noise floor. And this time... I have it set to peak and what that's doing is all the audio I'm sending into this that's already getting massively compressed by this is now getting absolutely slammed by this by the peak and then it goes into utility and all this is doing is flipping the fade and after that I have another one which tackles the low end and it's the exact same idea with all this stuff uh, the only thing that changes is the threshold uh, on both of these uh, different things so I can you know fit the noise floor better but all this is is a 
high cut. And this is set to 60 dB per octave. I'll show you why that in a second. It's your latency. Now if I turn this on, you can hear it does the exact same thing that RX10 Hum did, but it uses no more uh, CPU. And let me show you why it's on 60 dB per octave. If I do something like brick wall, you can hear it's a huge difference. So then after that, I'm a real sucker for perfection, but even if you just wanted to do nothing on its own, you could just do like a denoiser and that would be fine. Uh, I do two denoisers and then a, a EQ to boost the brightness a bit because I do kind of feel like this first uh, thing that tackles the high end ever so slightly reduces the high end a bit. So I do do that. Then I go into a gate and then I have this WNS mono, which is only tackling the low frequencies. And that only kicks in when I'm not talking just because I, I felt like it was it was going to ring out a bit that completely optional, right? This is decent. It's workable. You could probably just use a gate, but you know, I'm, I'm super perfectionist, but yeah, there's that. You can see in the, the difference in the CPU, if I disable all these uh, effects right now, so all the effects are disabled and I'm, I'm using a around 20 ish percent of my DSP and then I'm going to go re-enable it all. And then with everything enabled, I'm using maybe three to four more. I mean, that difference is huge to me. And so, yeah, there's that. Thanks for watching and go join my discord if you need one-on-one -on -one help with shit like DAW setup or something. Thanks.